on it, don't swallow this. Uh, this is not to be consumed. And if you've ever uh, siphoned gas, you know exactly what I'm saying. It's not uh, a consumable commodity. No, no. Even after all of the hours of refinery uh, that it goes through. So there's a danger out there and it's lurking just 90 some miles. Uh, and Brother Wade, who is a part of this congregation, works for the county and it's part of his job to go around the bays, go out to the dam and go around and do test samples on all of the water tributaries all around. And he told me, I asked him about it, uh, I asked him and he said, within, if God doesn't move within two weeks, it'll be on our shores. How many will pray that God will stop that somehow? Oh God, pray that God will stop that somehow. Uh, and uh, instead of pointing blame, we ought to use everybody we can from a rocket scientist right on through. What do we do to stop this? And uh, because it's going to take God to help us. And, and they're not going to rope it off. They're not going to be able to barricade it off. Uh, it, all, it wouldn't take long for those that uh, get on YouTube or get on uh, the internet. All you have to do is click on Louisiana and look at the pelicans and look at the animals and look at the birds that they're pulling up now and look at the condition that, these, that this thing is already causing to take place. But here in the 21st chapter of the book of Luke, Jesus, of course, is dealing with two elements. He's dealing with the, the close of the Jewish world. But wait a minute. He's also dealing with the close of the Gentile age. Now, we, we have to understand, and you must understand, that God uh, is a God of the ages, that there are more than one age in the Scripture. And you don't have to turn. Just listen to what I'm saying. Hebrews 11 said, We understand that uh, by faith that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. That means that every age has been already bounded and set by God. That there's more than one world that the Bible speaks of. And that these worlds in, in uh, Hebrews 11 were, they have been bounded. That is, that just means like a five by seven picture. It's only five by seven. You look at a photograph, that's it. It's not doing anything else. You're not going to make it any wider. You're not going to make it any taller. It's been set by God. So these ages have been set by God in eternity to be bring about uh, the end of the world. And when the Jewish world came to an end, we know according to scripture that in, uh, in AD 70, that Jewish world came to an end. Now, we've been working on from that time to this, we've been working on part of these scriptures and let's begin with uh, uh, verse 24. I'm moving, I won't, I'll take questions. Anybody has any questions, I'll take any questions that uh, you have, but I look at verse uh, 19, I look at verse 20, and I look at these scriptures as being the close of the Jewish age. These, uh, when you shall see uh, Jerusalem, compass the battle with armies, and shall you know the desolation is nigh. I say that that happened, and that was uh, dealing with the Jewish age. However, we must understand that through the duality of the scripture, we must make, make room and not be dogmatic for some of these scriptures, for it is possible under the duality of the scripture to have a scripture applicable to more than one dispensation. Too much to chew, we'll come back on it another time. But uh, the uh, uh, this, this scripture, I believe, with all my heart, was fulfilled in AD 70. Verse 22, for these days uh, uh, shall be the days of vengeance, and all things which are written may be fulfilled. Verse 23. Woe unto them that are with child that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. They shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away uh, captive, and all nations led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem. Now we're coming down to where we are right now. Uh, moving into verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. We're going to move into these scriptures. 
uh, and dispensationally, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and they shall be led away captive into all nations. Question, was Jonah swallowed by the whale? Jonah is a picture of the Jewish nation. And these Gentile countries swallowed up all of these uh, Jews and they have been there in this condition ever since. And uh, uh, so uh, that's, this is where they've been. They've been in this hell. They, uh, they've been in the belly of hell. Uh, now for 2,000 years they've been. And uh, even, even uh, uh, in the 15th chapter of the book of Luke, the Bible said there was a great gulf fixed. And this great gulf was fixed, and that great gulf we know is 2,000 years. I'll take questions on that, but I think most of you have been taught on that. And, but we won't deal with that necessarily, Abraham and Lazarus right there. But that's dealing also with the Jewish nation. That's also showing that this, this, that this great gulf was fixed between them. And they shall be led away into all these nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So we're coming into that. I, I, I believe with all my heart that the times of the Gentiles are coming to an end. And that uh, the uh, verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and, and in the moon and in the stars and in the earth, distress of all nations. By the way, Brother Pete, did you see that in Guatemala? That tremendous hole in the earth. And the circumference of that thing is incredible. And it is just as round as if you took a drill bit and drilled it. However, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, walls of it look like it just was just put there by some massive drill bit. And they say it's 30 stories deep. This, this, uh, and you look at this now. Look at the ecological imbalance. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at the tides. Look at the tsunamis. And look at the earthquakes that have hit this earth. And people play with God, don't have time for God. Uh, and a nation's rejecting God and turning their back on God when the heavens themselves the Bible said, would melt with fervent heat. And then look at this next verse now. This is where the Lord led me last night. I'm going to take you through something here. may not be very deep, but believe you me, when you study it out, it'll be an eye-opener to you. And I'm glad I'm here to share it with you tonight. Men's hearts would failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, how many know that fear is rampant in the earth right now? Fear is rampant. Fear has no place. Let me say this. I say it by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost here tonight. Fear has no place in the church of Jesus Christ. The fear of what's coming should not bother a saint of God that's rooted and grounded, Sister Elizabeth, in the truth. Because for years, the prophets of God have warned us of what's coming. How many have heard it since you were children? There's gray in my hair now. Brother Dick, there's gray in our hair now. But the prophets, Brother Mike, have been warning us for years. And men's hearts have been failing them with fear, More fear for looking upon the things that are coming upon this earth, but not the church. Why? Is it 2 Timothy 1 and 7? For he had not given us the spirit of fear. fear. Yes. Now he's talking about the believers that we have not been given the spirit of fear. Yes. Now, I want you to take notes. I want you to take notes. I'll, I'll give you something that's really rich, really good. And if you miss it, and uh, it's possible, uh, Marlo said it's possible to just look at this guy in his checkered shirt tonight, his little old brother Lonnie that grew up here as a young boy. It is, it is possible. And it is done. And just this weekend, and I don't mind it, it's okay, I'm all right with it. 
I had a brother slap me on the back. 